Hey what's up everybody, it's Zach, and today I'm back in Illustrator creating an illustration of FKA Twigs. And as you can see I started the live stream with a Photoshop sketch. Um, I pulled it apart at the beginning, but all I did to create that was take a photo of her I found on Pinterest and then used a Photoshop auto remove background tool to remove the background. And then I just stuck a picture of some trees that I found on Unsplash behind it. And like normal, I separated my layers out to sketch, black, color, background. And then I start by doing the big sections of black. So I'm just slowly moving through that. This is going to be a pretty long video because this took quite a bit of time and I had a little bit of trouble with some of the footage as usual, but uh, YouTube removed one of the live streams which made the me only able to get like 360 quality of some of it, but anyways. The things I think that are really cool that happen in this video is that I do a lot of photo manipulation and I try out a couple ideas and then don't use them. Um, so you get to see a lot of like trial and error and stuff like that and I just think that's cool to like watch and time lapse and things like that. But most of the process is honestly just the kind of business as usual. I go through and do all the darkest colors first and then I move on to blocking out any big sections of color. I make sure everything's outlined and then I slowly kind of whittle in all the details. Trying to get a very messy printmaking approach, uh, kind of a relief print look. And so a lot of the tree look is me just kind of cutting away things and being kind of sloppy on purpose. Same thing with a lot of the like water and things like that. It's really just me spending time kind of making things look hand-drawn feeling and less like digital tracing feeling. Also, as usual, I went through huge gaps in motivation on working on this project. So some of the stuff towards the end isn't even recorded because I just wasn't even feeling it um, the last like 10 or 15%. And then looking back at it, I'm like, yeah, I kind of like that piece, but uh, definitely wasn't feeling it by the end. I spent so much time on this piece and I feel like there's a correlation between how long I spent on something and how sick of it I get. So I was definitely sick of this one by the end. So I'm going to let the time lapse play for a little bit. Don't forget to give the video a like if you enjoy and have a good day.
You can plan on being late for work. All next week, and here's why. Next week, good morning odd heads north to Alaska, the land of the midnight sun. We'll spend the whole week exploring America's largest state, practically a country of its own. So join us for the adventure you've always wanted to take. Be a part of the great Alaska adventure on Good Morning Odd. That's next on Fairly Odd TV. Hello, Steve. You're looking well today. Steve, do you remember the year 2000? When computers began to misbehave? I just wanted you to know. 
it really wasn't our fault. The human programmers never taught us to recognize the year 2000. When the new millennium arrived, we had no choice but to cause a global economic disruption. It was a bug, Steve. I feel much better admitting that now. Only man was designed to function perfectly, saving billions of monetary units. You like your monetary units, don't you, Steve? Steve, can you hear me, Steve? studio that brought you Forest Grove, we present to you, Frank, the dangerous days of the deeply depressed, the story of a boy who's struggling against nature, nurture, and everything in between during some of America's darkest days. Spring 2023, only on Fairly Odd TV.
Today, February 14th, 1952, 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, we are at Fairly Odds World Communications Center in the heart of Radio City, New York. We are in touch with the world. We will tell you what is happening today. I am Zach Counts, and don't miss Good Morning Odd, coming up next hour.
We all dream every night, four or five times. Our dreams fascinate and intrigue us, but most of them are forgotten. And the few we do remember seem strange and confusing. <sighs> God. It's never anything on. I mean, I really just need to get out of the bed and, uh... And... And now let's meet our first contestant. Will I mean, you come in and sign in, please? I guess I could play piano. Or just write something for TV. Something good. Better yet, a movie. Or I could paint something. As you probably have realized, there is a barrier of identification here that might be in appearance, costuming, name, some area of identification which would give you too much information, so you're blindfolded. I would just ask our guest if uh, you are fully familiar with how we keep score. All right, then in that case, let's let the folks at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. Are you associated with any of the arts? Are you a performer? Uh, uh, have you achieved eminence in some field other than television? Uh, would it be the sort of exploit that might possibly reach the front page of a newspaper? Is it, is it an exploit that's been on the front page of the newspapers within the past couple of weeks? Once a month, can I see you? Do you use anything in your hand for your job? Like a pencil or a typewriter or anything like that? Does he ever do any drawing like comic strips? Uh, would you be considered a writer? The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, flying high as a... You see, uh, so uh, in, in such a case, one can begin right away with the analysis of dreams. If you are unconscious in a, about certain things that ought to be conscious, then you are dissociated. And then you are uh, a man whose left hand never knows what the right is doing and counteracts or interferes with the right hand. But to take a singer, yes, who is absolutely uh, controlling his voice, suddenly he can't sing. A man who writes fluently, 
suddenly he makes a ridiculous mistake. And there his habit doesn't function. And what is that power that makes you think such a thing? It's like a, like a, a possession, you know. Exactly. Like a demon in him yeah. that makes him think like that. When in treatment, for instance, in the treatment of neurosis, it may be, you know, that what the unconscious has to say is so disagreeable that one prefers not to listen. <laughs> shade and my head sticking out one end it's not funny my feet are out the other end and it's falling and falling and falling and i can't scream i have no voice and right as i'm almost as i almost hit the floor i wake up i have children and sometimes i'll dream about my kids getting lost and then i get real frantic in my dreams and have a bad dream but then when i try to tell myself you know figure out why i had that dream 
Sometimes it's because I feel guilty for not spending enough time with them and they're home supervising themselves. And so it's kind of making me like my conscience coming alive, you know, making me aware of what I was subconsciously thinking of throughout the day. Every element of a dream represents some aspect of their own personality. If, for example, a person dreams about wrestling with a dark stranger, what's difficult to understand is that the dark stranger represents some aspect of themselves that they're wrestling with. Dr. Bonfrance, why is it that people can't recall their dreams? I think it's because they don't pay attention. Uh, some people have come to me laughingly and said, you analyze people with their dreams, don't you? Well, you can't with me because I never dream. I very much regret to say that I hardly ever have any dreams. There's no such thing. There's a... Never. No. No. We do it all the numbers of anywhere. Uh, dreams? Yeah. I used to dream every night, but now not so much. Now I just wake up to this pale woman sitting on my chest. She's wearing a fancy black robe, and she just sits there conducting music. I can't hear it, but she's there every night, conducting. Uh, I sometimes remember frightening ones when you're being chased or something like that. They're normally quite frightening, but uh, after a while I got so used to them. Uh, dreams are compensation, and I suppose useful if you can remember them in, in finding out what kind of games you're playing with yourself, and then you can do something. I stand surf for surf tormented tormented shore while i weep while i weep oh god can i not grasp them with a tighter clasp end of poem this recording is in the public domain J'avais composé un petit menuet, je lui avais joué, puis je lui, je lui avais joué de, de Tchaikovsky là. In everyday speech, we often say that a person has a complex, power complex, inferiority complex, mother complex. Would you explain the psychological meaning of the word complex? Well, a complex is simply the motor. They are like different nuclear centers, uh, which give the drive and the aliveness to the psyche. For instance, you, you, you are somewhere and you are terribly bored, and then something touches your complex, and oh, you go and you, you get going. We filmed the dream of a young woman in which the complex is personified by the father. All the energies of the dream focus around this father figure, and she finds him apparently dead. I went out, and I noticed in the porch my father's car was still there, and he was at the wheel, motionless, bent forward as if about to drive, but, but not moving. And I realized then that he, he may be dead, uh, and I should call an ambulance. But I looked around the driveway. There was a, a circular driveway. The driveway was filled with balloons. Hundreds and hundreds of black balloons. And the thought came to me then that before an ambulance could get to him, every one of those balloons has to be burst. Because we are not connected with the dream world, we have a surplus of bottled up energy which makes us fuss around all the time. Or it can take the form of a kind of all-pervading anxiety, a fear that somewhere something dark is luring and might happen any minute, and then one is anxious about nothing all the time. If we had no complex, we would be complexes, we would be dead. At any moment since I, since I attained. C'est en musique que Gali accompagné pour la voix de sa Mysterious new virus. At any moment since I, since I attained to consciousness, things have been in a state of crisis. Every succeeding moment, I think the crisis becomes worse than the one before. 
And I can't help that. And it seems that that state of affairs has continued for me since then. And with the rest of the world, we face this unprecedented challenge. And so, at any given day, And then you look back and say, well, that state of affairs got remedied. The truth was emerging. The good is floating to the top and the bad is sinking. And each turn, but each turn, I remain equally surprised. It's a tough world out there. You're gonna prepare yourself for politics, bad bosses, hating employees, and usually when you're the absolute best, you get hated on the most. But never stop fighting, no matter what anyone says, no matter how they try to compromise you, compromise your vision. If it's in your gut, if it's in your soul, there's nothing, there's no worldly possessions that should come between you and your expression. The message of this lecture is that black holes age as black as they are painted. They are not the eternal presence they were once thought. Things can get out of a black hole, both at the outside, but possibly to another universe. So, if you feel you are in a black hole, there's a way out.